How's it going everybody? Thank you for watching this video and just a quick note if you guys are subscribed or if you guys haven't subscribed yet make sure to subscribe and when you do click this little bell here on my channel and get all notifications sent to you from my channel that way you guys can be updated with all of my channel updates and uploads and whatever else I do on here. Thanks for watching. How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Source Code. My name is Deshaun and today we're going to be looking at the player move event and we're going to be doing things when the player moves. Kind of what we did last time but we're going to do a little bit more this episode. Also be sure to stick around and make sure not to jump around in the video or you could miss a line of code which could honestly drastically change uh, the outcome of your project. Also, everything in this video will be available for you on GitHub so make sure to go follow my, go follow me on GitHub and you guys can check your project to make sure everything is working right for you. Um, so let's get started. So like I said, we're going to be looking at the player move event which we sort of did last episode but we simply just did a little simple print out. So what we want to do is we want to type in, well, first let me explain what's, what's happening right here. So this is the public void. So the on move is what we're calling this method here. So if I created another um, constructor inside of here and we'll just call it run, I can actually call this on move just, well, I, I can, but I, I can't because I, I have to match it like this. Um, but so let's just say there's nothing inside of there. I can call this class or this constructor inside of another constructor here. Um, so that's just what to note here. And then we called the player move event and then we called it event. So now what this is allowing us to do is this, is a, this event here is allowing us to reference everything inside of here. Um, that way we don't have to use reflections and stuff like that. So it makes it really, really easy for us to do. Um, so what we want to do now is we want to cast something for the player and we do that by typing uppercase player, lowercase player, and then we want to do equals event dot get player. And now control shift O to import that. And again, what we're doing here is this can be named anything you want. And the same thing here, like I could just have this simply as an E and it works exactly the same, but I'd like to make it something that's really obvious so that way I don't have to wonder if E actually means entity or something like that. So now that we have the player here, and what we're gonna do is we're just simply gonna have it send the player a message whenever they move. So we can do dot player or player dot send send message, and then we're gonna give it a chat color here, dot red, and then plus sign, and then quotes for strings, and you are moving. And then we will uh, end that right there. So so now every time that we move, we are sending the player a message. And now this might seem really stupid, but we have to do these things. We have to do these small little you know, tweaks and testing um, so we can learn the methods behind everything else. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at adding items to the player's inventory every time that they move. And we can do this simply by creating a new item stack and then we'll call it item. And now an item stack is pretty much any item that you have is considered an item stack. Um, even if you only have one, it's still considered an item stack. So if we do item stack, and then we gotta do new, space, uppercase I for item stack, and then uh, parentheses, and we wanna do uppercase M for material, dot, whatever we want to add to their inventory. Um, so I'm gonna add golden apples, and then we do a comma, we do the quantity that we want, and we are all set to go. And now, if you're wanting to add, um, you know, say like you want to do like wool or something like that, like colored wool, um, you have to do it a different way. So don't really worry about that right now. We'll talk about that in a future video. Um, but then what we want to do is we also want to get the player's inventory. So again, we're going to call for inventory p inv, and that's going to equal player dot get inventory. And now, pretty much everything inside of bucket that you can think of for like a player pretty much is exactly what it is so if you want to call for a block you just do block and we can actually we can act oops we can actually import that um, but we're not gonna do it right now control shift to import everything and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do p inv dot add item item so now what's going to happen is we're going to get a message whenever we're moving and we're going to also get an apple added to our inventory every time that we move. So every time that we move now, 
we're going to get a golden apple and we're going to get a message sent to us. So, like I said before, this might seem really, really stupid and really trivial that we're doing something like this and something so simple, um, but now you guys know how to add items to the player's inventory, you guys know how to send a player a message, you guys know how to, and you guys also know how to create um, items and have, you know, call for any item inside of um, Minecraft now. And we're going to do one last thing here. So this is deprecated, but I still think it's pretty cool. We can actually send the player a message um, if they are only in the air. So if we do if player dot is on ground, and we can just move this into here. Control shift F to fix our imports or to uh, organize everything. And we have to add the suppress deprecation here. Um, so now what's going to happen is it's only going to add items and it's only going to send messages when the player is on the ground or is in the air. Or I'm sorry, if player is only on the ground, but we can add an exclamation point here. And what that does is say if not on the ground, basically what it's saying. So pretty much you can say if player not is on ground. It's the easiest way to think to to explain it. Exclamation point just basically means no. So if no, right? So now nothing's happening until we jump. Right? So let me clear my inventory here just so it's easier to see. So look at that. Nothing's happening. But if we are off the ground, we are getting items. Um, but once we are on the ground, we are no longer getting items. So this could be used for, I don't know, if you're making a map or maybe you 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 get like experience or something you know, for falling or whatever you want to do but and now again like i said it seems super trivial but you guys actually just learned a lot of things in this video right you learned how to call for players and get the player from the event you learned how to get the player's inventory and sort of and set the variable for that you guys learned how to create custom item stacks although they're not really custom items yet you guys learned how to create item stacks you guys learned about sending players messages, adding items to the inventories, and now you guys also learned what an if statement does. So, I think that's a lot to learn here in this one video. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a comment and drop a like and subscribe. And that's really all I got for you guys today, so be sure to join me back next time where we're actually going to be talking about the player interact event, which is pretty cool and you can do a couple cool things with that. And also make sure to comment your thoughts. And if you guys uh, want to, go ahead and tweet at me at the underscore that uh, underscore. Sorry, tweet at me at the underscore source underscore code or tweet at the hashtag TSC coding to share your projects or troubleshooting. And lastly, make sure to follow me on GitHub for these project files. And once again, thanks for watching.